Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Dan! Alright, so it's been a week since I did my very first video and we are at 100 followers! Woo! Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for supporting my page and hopefully it will continue to progress uh, at the speed we're currently going. So for the third video, uh, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to do hung chicken uh, with snow peas um, and a little bit of flavour as it goes. So, hung chicken is a very different sort of style meal. Um, it originally came from uh, New Orleans, I think, uh, and uh, it requires a few different ingredients. So we'll go on down and we'll get started. Okay, so we need some ingredients to cook the hanging chicken. So first of all, we're gonna require chicken. Uh, I'm gonna do, use two breasts here today. We're going to fillet these, spread them out, uh, add some ingredients to it, and then do the hanging process. The next thing we're going to require is uh, cheese, uh, cheddar, Swiss, your choice, depends what flavour uh, does it best for you. Then we're going to go for Sereno ham uh, or smoked bacon. Uh, either one will work just as fine. Uh, you, uh, you want something with a bit of flavour, so we want uh, a smoked version. Uh, get this out of Woolly or Coles, it'll do just what you need. Uh, we want pumpkin. So, uh, parliament pumpkin is the best because it cooks uh, more evenly uh, and softer in flavour, but you can use uh, any of the style of pumpkins you want. Uh, we want a onion, uh, so uh, just a simple brown onion will do. And we want a cap skin, red, green or yellow, neither makes a difference, but what we want to go is for three on the bottom. So if you don't know the differences between capskins, look it up on Google. Uh, there are four on the bottom or three on the bottom. One is better for roasting, one is better for frying. Uh, last things we need is for the uh, snow peas. Uh, we want our snow peas here. We're going to head and tail them and boil them up. Some spring onions. And also for this dish, we're going to require some specialized cooking tools. So one of them, uh, something that most people have in their homes and you should have lying around. This is a coat hanger. So we're going to use this uh, as our hanging implement. Though. What we're going to do is we're going to do this immediately to get it ready. We're just going to grab our coat hanger and we're going to stretch it out. And then we're going to bend it together. And by stretching it and bending it together you should end up with a really elongated L shape. And then we're just going to bend that L shape up. So we end up with a hanger. It looks very similar to what it did to begin with, but instead of having the triangle connected, we now have an open section that we can run our chicken on. Right, so that is our first uh, specialized cooking implement that we're going to require. The second one we're going to require, and this is going to puzzle a few people, but zip ties. So we're going to use these to actually wrap the chicken. Now you've got different options when you wrap your chicken. You can use zip ties like what I'm about to do. Uh, they, as long as they're washed, are a hygienic use. And because we're not going to go for a super high temperature, they're not going to melt. They're not going to contaminate the chicken. Uh, you can also use a baking twine and wrap your chicken with that. Or you can use, there are specialized elastic bands you can buy as well um, that can be placed onto the chicken. But we're going to use zip ties just because, hey, why not? Okay, so we're going to grab our chicken. Uh, these again are really big breasts. Uh, I don't know what we'll worse uh, doing to their chickens, but this is ginormous. Like the breast of this is as big as my hand. We are going to get this nice and thin slices. So we're going to lay the blade flat to the edge of the chopping board. And we're going to go down about a centimeter and we're just going to gently bring the knife back and forth. And what we're doing is we're actually taking fillets of chicken. And we want to end up with a fillet that is about five mils thick. And we're just going to continue to do this with the chicken. All right, and that is our chicken ready to go. It's the easiest part of the dish. Uh, the second part we need to do is we're going to grate our cheese up, uh, slice our pumpkin up, get our cup skin ready, and a bit of onion. Okay, so with our cheese, we're going to slice this relatively thin, about, uh, I'd say three or four mils thick. And we're just going to do, I don't know, probably about a third of this block. And then with our capskin, we are going to cut the center out of it. Okay. 
Slice down the center. I'm gonna open this up. And we're gonna cut on a diagonal down into it so we get widespread pieces of capsicum. And then we're gonna take our pumpkin. And again, thin slices with the pumpkin. We can leave the skin on for this. And then we wanna take a onion. We're gonna need half the onion for this. And what we're gonna do is, is peel that. And we are gonna split it in half. And we're gonna go for rings. Okay, then we have the basic ingredients of what we're gonna be placing into it, along with that uh, ready to go Serino ham. And then we have our hung chicken. So it looks like a bit of a mess here as we're in the soup, but trust me, when we cut that, uh, zip ties off and we present them on the plate, it is going to taste and look amazing. So that is our hung chicken. We're going to take this over to the oven now and show you what we do with it. Alright guys, so we're going to take our chicken across to an oven that has been preheated to about 250 to 300 degrees Celsius. And inside that oven, we need to move our rack to the highest point that we can. Um, I've cheated a little and I've taken my rack even higher by using a couple of baking trays on either side uh, just to prop it up. Then we're going to take our chicken. We're going to place a tray in the bottom of it. And we're just going to take our chicken here. And we are going to hang it. Hung above the baking tray there, it's going to allow heat to go all the way around the chicken and uh, any of the grease and everything drip off and present a slightly drier style of chicken. So we're going to close that one up and we're going to move on to the next dish. And that one there is probably going to take about half an hour to 45 minutes to cook. Okay, so the side dish accompanying with this one is going to be uh, a snow piece. Um, we're going to just simple uh, boil these with a bit of sugar to sweeten them up and then we're going to cut up some spring onions, uh, some lemon, uh, drizzle it over with a little bit of paprika um, and uh, then we're just going to mix it up with a little bit of olive oil. Okay so with these snow peas we just want to head and tail them first so you just chop these, the head and the tail off each of the snow peas and do it one million times. Okay, so we're going to take these snow peas and we're going to get a pot. Uh, here's one I pre-prepared earlier uh, with a tablespoon of sugar into it. And we're just going to place them straight into the pot. Seal them up. I'm going to place these on the oven until they come to the boil. Uh, once they come to the boil, I'm going to show you when we want to take them off. Okay, so while our snow peas are coming up to the boil, we're going to prepare the dressing um, for this. So we need a drill, uh, bowl. Uh, we're going to take some spring onions. Uh, we're just going to chop the heads off these spring onions because they would have dried out and discard them. And we want to cut up about a small handful's worth. So that should be should be plenty. What we're gonna do is we're just going to trim these down a little bit more. and place them into the bowl. We're gonna take a little bit of that onion that we pre-prepared earlier, that was in the rings, and we're gonna dice this really fine. Now, this is a personal preference choice. I like my food a little spicier. This is a paprika, a uh, tiny little chili. Uh, I'm just gonna use half of this. And again, I'm going to dice this one up nice and small. And remember when you're playing with chilies, don't touch your eyes. For God's sake, you will hate me forever if I hadn't already said it. 
Then we're going to take a fresh lemon. And we're going to slice this in half. And we're going to just de-pip that so it doesn't end up in our mixture. And squeeze one half lemon into it. Keeping an eye on that you don't get any seeds. Do pull them out. Don't want them in that. And then we're going to take the zest. Now the zest of a lemon is the yellow part of the outside without getting any of the white. Don't need much of this. It's just going to add a little flavor. So you can either use this with a knife, you can use it with a spoon. But what you're trying to do is peel the lemon to the point where you're not getting any of the white out, but you are getting the lemon zest. And we want to slice that up nice and fine. Into the bowl. And then we want a splash of oil in there. Some more ground pepper. And a touch more of that Portuguese chicken, which again is the paprika. And we want to mix it all up. So you can use a whisk here, uh, a fork, spoon, whatever you like. I'm just going to leave those flavors all to sit in the bottom of the bowl. And marinate for a few minutes while the snow peas uh, get up to boil. Okay guys, so our snow peas have just started to boil. And we just want to check on them to make sure that they are going okay. Now there's two ways to tell when your snow peas are done. Uh, the colour is going to change and your water is going to change. So what we're going to do is just take a fork and we're just going to stir them around make sure that they're going okay. And you just want to take the fork and you just want to push into the snow pea. If it doesn't gently go in by itself, it's not ready yet. But it is a delicate balancing game because we need to pay attention as to, uh, we don't want to overcook these, they'll turn to mush. So we still want them relatively crisp, we still want that flavor and you still want the crunch, but we do want them cooked. All right, so as you can see, my fork is now pushing into it quite easily. So what we can do is we're gonna turn the water off. And while we're here, guys, we will also check on our chicken, see how that's going. Oh yes, it's just about ready looking at that. Now, one of the disadvantages that I have are with cooking with a um, commercial oven is most of them don't have lights. As a disadvantage, but for the size and the space that I got this for, I'm not going to complain. So looking at that, it looks very much so our chicken is cooked. So we're going to kill the heat on that one. And take this out and we will finish off our side dish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those snow peas that we have cooked up, ready to go. And we're going to take our ready to go uh, vinaigrette. And we are going to take our snow peas, drain them off just with a fork, and we're just going to put them straight into that mixture. And then we're just going to stir this around, making sure that our snow peas are completely covered in the mixture. And we'll leave that to sit for a minute or so while we take our chicken out. And here is our hung chicken, cooked to perfection. So how we get this hung chicken off is a relatively simple process. Remembering that the coat hanger is going to be extremely hot, we're just going to take a oven mitt and a fork, we lift the hanger and we're just going to pull that chicken directly off onto a chopping board. 
And again with the second one. Now I'm going to take a knife and holding our chicken, I'm just going to slice up on that coat hang on the zip tie. And the same on the other one. And there we have our cooked and tasty hung chicken. So the final thing I'm going to do is we're just going to plate this up and then I'm going to show you the end product. A very simple and very easy meal. And here we have it guys, the final result and plated dish of the hang chicken. So we had our chicken, we uh, cut that down into thin slips. We then laid it out, we put uh, Serino bacon or um, smoked bacon over the top of that, some pumpkin, some onion, some cheese, um, and then we've rolled it all up put it in a special coat hanger and we've done a side dish of snow peas with our vinaigrette. I hope you've enjoyed this dish, it is a little bit different. Again, thank you to the 100 followers that we now have and we can only progress and get better from here. Uh, I'm hoping to invest in a better quality mic so you guys can hear me a little bit better and I might do some overlay of the audio and uh, we'll make this a little bit more professional each time we go. And stay tuned for the fourth installment of Cooking with Dan.